You probably know that one of the key ingredients to brewing beer is the yeast. And if you're a brewer, you can buy many different kinds of yeast commercially. Or, if you're like this brewery, you can get your yeast from the guts of wasps. What? <laughs> the guts of wasps? Well, it turns out that that's actually not such a crazy idea. Uh, I'm Sebastian Ibarra. I'm uh, an instructor for the craft beer and brewing essentials at SFU. I'm a beer enthusiast. I'm a fan of Brass Neck. Well, I'm Conrad Gamoser. Uh, I'm the head brewer and co-owner of uh, Brass Neck Brewery. Um, I've been a brewer for about 20 years now, but uh, Brass Neck is a relatively new project. We're uh, just about to turn three years old. Uh, what is yeast? Uh, yeast is a single-celled microorganism. It belongs to the group of fungi. As a fungus, it means that the organism relies on external sources of food. And so they are very unique in the way they process their food. So they consume the sugars and as a byproduct, they excrete alcohol. Humans have been using yeast for thousands of years. We use it for making bread, for making beer, wine, and with the advent of science, we use it for other things, the biotechnological industry, the pharmaceutical industry, we depend on yeast for producing insulin. And so given the relevant importance of brewer's yeast, there seemed to be a lack of understanding of the ecology of the organism itself. Brewer's yeast was the first complex organism to have its genome sequenced. So a huge amount is known about its genetics, but we don't really know where it came from. This prompted researchers to look for yeast in different places in the wild, and some researchers from Italy found brewer's yeast in the guts of wasps. And so these guys in Italy were looking for a mechanism through which the yeast survives outside of man-made environments. And they made some experiments and found evidence to suggest that brewer's yeast survives in the gut of wasps through the off-fruit season. So I just wanted to test whether we would observe the same thing happening in this part of the world or was it just a localized uh, phenomena in continental Europe? We started opening the gut of these wasps that we have here in, in British Columbia and plating the contents to see if we were going to find brewer's yeast. We found this particular species of yeast uh, that is related to brewer's yeast, but it doesn't fall within the same natural group. Um, and the species is called Lachancia thermotolerans. So the yeast is using social insects and hiding out in their guts during winter. And then in the spring, when the wasp makes its new nest, it passes that yeast on to its offspring and then this gets passed out into the wild. It may be that there's other insects that provide with that specific habitat, but there's something unique that wasps provide by being social organisms. Um, they depend on each other for feeding, and so that's how they may transmit from one generation to the next. The previous generations of yeasts that will be later transported into the next cohort of fruits. They've right. kind of hijacked the biology of, of, of wasps. Right, right. When scientists have looked at yeasts in the wild, they see a huge diversity of different types. But there's a puzzle as to where these different types come from. When yeast is eating a piece of fruit, it reproduces by cell division, just cloning itself. But yeast can also reproduce by exchanging genetic information through sexual reproduction. The intestines of wasps trigger certain behaviors uh, in the yeast. There's changes in acidity and there's changes in nutrient availability. And so yeast responds to that by wanting to reproduce sexually. And so that's when multiple strains may come into contact and produce hybrids. Right. Something that yeast species don't like to do when they're outside. Reproducing sexually is a gamble because the offspring might not be so good at surviving in the same environment. There needs to be a good reason to take this risk. And this might be because of the changing environment in the wasp guts. This is an important result as it gives us one explanation as to where the diversity of different yeast came from. So how do you go from finding this yeast in the guts of wasps to then deciding to make a beer out of it? <laughs> I'm not a brewer. Okay. And so the answer to that is you 
pass it on to the expert. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when we're making beer, uh, we cook what we call the wort. Uh, that's uh, basically a sugary solution made from well, barley. It's, uh, it's got hops in it as well. Um, you can think of it a bit like beer juice. Um, and once we're done cooking the wort, we cool it down, and that's where we add yeast. And yeast is what turns that sugary solution into what we know of as, as beer. Um, it usually takes two to like a, a week or two, depending on the yeast. It, you know, it's not just a matter of producing carbon dioxide and alcohol. What's really interesting about yeast is how it just completely transforms the flavor of, of, uh, of what we start with. You know, what you end up with this amazing beverage. <laughs> One of the things we do here uh, is we use a lot of a lot of yeast strains relative to to, to some other breweries. You know, it's uh, complicated to to deal with a lot of different yeast strains um, in one brewery, but uh, it's something we have a lot of fun with. So so when uh, Sebastian came by asking if we wanted to mess around with some some yeast isolated from the blast we were like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I thought most of the flavour of beer came from the hops, but it turns out that yeast also plays a large role. I mean, hops are very important, um, but yeast has, it has a huge influence on the flavour of beer. And uh, all, all yeast strains uh, produce, uh, to some degree, uh, esters and phenols. Um, and, and those are compounds, organic compounds, that, uh, that, produce, that are fruity and, or spicy um, in some beers. It's really the yeast that is that is almost the most important ingredient because uh, you know we say we do a saison where you're looking for like a bit of a, almost like a pear character. Uh, that's it's the yeast that really does that. What's interesting is that yeast produces a lot of chemical compounds as a result of its metabolic pathways that it doesn't need to produce just to survive. So a hypothesis is that yeast does this to attract the wasps in order to then be eaten by them. But it's these compounds that we as humans also enjoy. I mean, in some ways, we're, we're attracted to uh, the same flavors that the, that the insects are. So we're just pretty much like big wasps. I think, it, <laughs> yeah, it could be where we're the, yeah, they've just got graduated from wasps to humans. <laughs> now they're trying their best to please us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I don't mind. Yeah. So thanks to Conrad and Sebastian for showing me around Brass Night Brewery and also telling me about all the kind of crazy stuff they're doing with the wasp gut yeast. Uh, it's been really interesting. If you're in the Vancouver area, I highly recommend you go check out Brass Night Brewery. It's always got a very interesting selection of beers on and I highly recommend it.